Hey, how's it going? And welcome to part two of my top tips for a great start to Skyrim. Okay, so this is a quick guide to get six great weapons to keep you alive at level one, including one you can't play to your level 50 conjuration. Indeed, some of these will pretty much see you through your entire playthrough. So that being said, let's just crack on. Okay, I mentioned these in the first video, but for those who haven't watched it yet, I'll mention them again. And in the description box below, below this video, I'll leave a link to walk through. I did on this a while ago, so make sure you check it out. Now, as a new character, you're very, very weak, so even my crabs can take you out. So having a bit of backup is pretty much essential, whether to take on enemies or to tank few. So the one thing I really, really, really recommend for any starter character is getting to the Atronach Forge to make some Atronach staffs. Now, you'll need to join the college to get these, so see part one of this little series to get the info on that. And if you're new to the game, well, technically there is a way to do this without joining the college, but just join the college and watch the first part to see why. Anyway, the forge is located in the midden and underground facility beneath the College of Windshold, and, now, and you can create these spells tomes for Atronax here, but because you're low level, your magic could be an issue. Plus, the range you can deploy in Atronax with a staff is far, far greater than a cast spell. So at this level, a staff is far more suitable. You'll need to collect some uh, or buy some ingredients to actually make these. Um, so see the guy for that. These little beauties are so effective and can be used for close support to help you fight or tank, while you run or be deployed in the middle of your enemies while they're still at a distance away and i have to say if you only get one thing on this list then these would be it and if you only want to start one staff then i'd recommend the storm atronach as he's the middle ground on strength and maneuverability plus few enemies have any resistance to shock damage but yeah i can't re recommend enough on getting one of these stars or preferably all three Now, the second weapon you should consider is a unique blade sword called Bowler's Oath Blade, which is found in Bloated Man's Grotto, a cave located a short distance from Whiterun, and it can be easily be reached from Riverwood by walking across the White River to the northwest uh, past Annecy's Cabin and through Brittlesham Pass, then heading due, due west. Or you can skirt the shore of Lake Lanata. Either way, it's easily accessible. Now, the cave itself is a beautiful place full of ingredients so make sure you spend time grabbing them but first you'll have to deal with some enemies which could include at level one cave bears sprig and matron if possible spriggans and wolves so i strongly recommend that you have the aforementioned atronach staffs and a follower to get this now the sword itself is a unique item so once you have no more need for it i reckon it should be displayed not sold but it's your choice it resembles the Akavari Katana from Oblivion, the sword the blaze used during the Third Era, and the hilt is wrapped in a black leather and the guard is a stylized cause serpent. It's actually a good looking sword, this. It can be upgraded with the Quicksilver Ingot and the Arcane Blacksmith perk at Grindstone, and also benefits from the Steel Smithing perk, which doubles the improvement. It has a base damage of 11, which is pretty damn decent, and a weight of 10, and it gives you the opportunity to get a dual enchanted weapon at level one now the enchantment does 25 points of stamina damage and creatures and people up to level 12 flee from combat for 30 seconds now this is a great enchantment for low level characters as when struck your enemies will run away meaning they will not be attacking you which will either give you the opportunity to cut them down whilst running or giving you time to escape however the longevity of this enchantment is in question as you'll rapidly uh, get past level 12 uh, opponents but at level one this is a great boon now however there is a caveat this sword uses a higher charge so you'll only be able to guess around three four uh, strikes before it's depleted so remember to keep loads of soul gems on board saying that this sword is comparable to an elven sword or a scimitar and is worth having just for that alone
Next up is a weapon I always get and use pretty much through my whole game and it's the Bound Bow. Now this is a tome that you shouldn't be able to buy until you're level 50 in Conjuration but you can get it at level 1. To do this you have to go to Fort Amol which is a fortress northeast of Iverstead, slightly off the road to Whiterun and it's overrun with mages who have seemingly slaughtered all the previous guards. And these guys will virtually one shot you so be prepared and watch my guide linked in the video description on how to get this weapon. But briefly once in a fort you'll be faced by two mages now you have to deal with these again watch a video on the best way to do this and in the corner you'll see a bucket and the tome is in that bucket so the bow itself is an adapt level conjuration spell now when cast gives you an ethereal version of the daedric bow and 100 ethereal daedric arrows for two minutes so you never run out of arrows it's got a base damage of 18, which increases to 24 after the perk Mystic Binding is applied. The arrows have a damage rate of 24, which is equal to Daedric arrows. Uh, casting a bow near enemies increases your conjuration skill, and landed shots increases your archery skill. Now, the because it can't be enchanted, to get the best amount of this bow, you need to use perks. And the perks to use are Soul Stealer, automatically inflicts targets on bound weapons with Soul Trap. Oblivion Binding, Conjured Daedra attacked with the bound weapons are banished. Reanimated Dead will flee when hit. Mystic Binding increases your base damage of all bound weapons. So if you use these perks, the bow is effectively triple enchanted with Soul Trap, Banish and Turn Effects. And it requires no recharging. And here's the kicker. All three effects are level 99 and can affect any susceptible creature undead which cannot be turned with an undead and, uh, and daedra which cannot be banished with the banished spell due to their levels are turned and banished by this bow hence its utility throughout the game um, the bow is also affected by archery perks as well as sneak perk deadly aim poisons can be applied and it weighs nothing it's one of the fastest bows in the game the door draw speed of the bound bow is around the same as the Nord Hero bow. Um, the bow without Mystic Binding deals um, more damage per second than any other bow in the game and significantly more if that perk is actually taken. So in summary this is probably one of the best weapons you get at an early stage and will possibly uh, can be used for your entire playthrough and if you're lucky enough to find the Bow Sword or Axe tomes then make sure you grab them. I haven't included these on the list as the only place I know that are guaranteed to give you those spells are way way above your pay grade at this moment in time. Can't recommend this weapon enough and it's definitely worth a tricky raid to get it. Okay, as mentioned previously, one of the Bound Bow's flaws is that you can deplete your magicka, leaving you defences for a short period of time. Now, to negate this, you can carry a spare bow, or indeed you may just not want the Bound Bow, so I'll show you where to get an Elven Bow as easily as an easy thing at level 1. Normally, unenchanted Elven Bows will begin to appear throughout Skyrim at around level 19, and enchanted bows can be found at level 20+. plus. So this is a pretty decent weapon to get at our level anyway. Now to get this bow, simply head to Yorvoska, <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce that, which is the home of the Companions and is located on the eastern side of Whiterun in the Wind Districts at the base of the Skyforge. Make your way into the room of Ayla the Huntress, uh, just wander around till you find it, and if she's there just uh, hit wait till she leaves. Close the door and pick the lock to the display case, and voila, you got yourself a powerful bow at level 1. Oh, and if you're feeling a bit adventurous, there's plenty of other stuff around here to steal, including a dwarven sword, so just make sure you quick save each time before you steal something. And it's worth noting the display case holding the bow has an expert lock, so make sure you bring plenty of lock picks. So the Elven Bow, it has a base damage of 13 and a weight of 12. It can be upgraded with a refined Moonstone ingot at a grindstone. The Elven Smithing Perk doubles the improvement. And this is definitely a, a weapon worth getting. It only takes a few minutes to steal, so uh, make sure you grab it. Okay, so next up is the Staff of Paralysis, and this can be found in Snapleg Cave, which is a small cave housing, several witches and hags, uh, and it's located between Iverstead and Rifton. There's a really interesting story in this cave, but for the purpose of this video, we'll only be going to the first chamber to get the staff. So, entering the cave, there's a room with three skeevers and a dead deer, with a tunnel at the far end. 
Beyond the tunnel are two witches and an animal, a skeever, troll or frostbite spider. Uh, but our, at our level, it's far more likely to be a skeever. Now, these witches are a force to be reckoned with. So again, I'd recommend bringing an Atronach staff and a follower. Anyway, deal with these enemies and you'll find the staff resting on a wooden box atop a mound to the left of the first tent. Now, this staff allows you a good chance to paralyze your target for around 10 seconds as long as they are susceptible to the spell of it that is this will enable you to attack them without taking damage it will give you time to run against a far more powerful enemy and if you're taking on multiple enemies it will allow you to take one or more out of the fight whilst you deal with the other this staff is invaluable and can get you out of a lot of many difficult situations and it really should be in your inventory And finally we come to Staff Arcane Authority. Now this is one of the weapons that will only be used for a short while as you level up, but again it's definitely worth having. Plus it's a unique item and can be displayed once you've outgrown it. There is a similar one in the Earl's Bedroom, but it's at a lower level version than this one. Now the staff is found in Winterhold and once there make your way into the frozen hearth and you'll find the staff under the counter in Neckla's room. So just steal it. Make sure you quick save before you do so. The staff makes creatures and people up to level 8 flee from combat for 60 seconds. Now, much like the staff paralysis, this is invaluable for making more powerful enemies run, and you can attack them as they are fleeing, or you can make good your escape. However, as I said before, the staff will have a limited shelf life as you quickly level past enemies this staff will affect. However, as you are getting to the point, the staff will be super handy, Plus it's a side quest in the college storyline, so it'll be handy to have anyway. And there you go, six relatively easy weapons to get at level one. If you don't want all of them, then I strongly suggest you get the Atronach Staffs, the Bound Bow and the Staff of Paralysis, as these can be used more or less for your whole playthrough. However, all six weapons are super handy for that initial push into the game, until you start picking up better stuff, or you're ready for higher level quests for weapons such as the Mace of Molag Bell, etc. And all your smithing and enchanting skills allow you to craft better stuff but there you go i hope you enjoyed the video and more importantly you found it useful see you later